What's up, guys? John here. And Charisse. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. It's been a great, great week for us here. And uh, we got some tips and some tricks. We also got some information for you guys. So usually every week, me and Charisse break it down for you guys. And some of these tips, tricks to help your guys' relationship get stronger, better, and maybe uh, even reunite that spark in the bedroom and out. Mm -hmm. So uh, this week, we want to talk about a couple different things. First one is about the bedroom. And no, not the way that you guys are thinking, okay? Dirty we can talk about that later on, but we can't talk about that on TV. Not on so, ABC. So let's talk about ways that couples sleep because it's really important. Yep. You want to know why? Because it's good for your health. It will tell about where you're at in your relationship, what's going on possibly. So let's get into the first topic. Ways that couples sleep. And this will kind of make sense to you. You might think back about your relationship and when it first started and did you do these things. So the first one, the first position that people sleep in usually when they're first getting together and everything like that is spooning. Yeah, spooning's fun. Large spoon and small spoon. Where's he going for this? Listen, I've researched <laughs> this all day long. Now where's the baby spoon? There's no baby spoon unless you make a baby spoon. Mm. So we're not making any baby spoons here, okay? <laughs> we're talking about the larger spoon, which is the outside partner. And usually that is the most protective one. Now, I can't say it's a male because Wait, we I have female I was going to say, female, is that supposed to be male or female? Well, because we have all different types of relationships with all different types of genders, we're not going to specify. Mm. We're going to say that the outside spoon, the larger spoon, is the more protective person. Right? Um, that's usually the person that puts the arm over the other person, mm. which is the little spoon, who's you know getting protected <laughs> by the larger. Listen, guys, th this is some very serious and death stuff. so cute. Okay? And I'm breaking it down for you guys so you guys understand this. And maybe you guys didn't know about these things. I didn't know. Hey, I don't know until now. You know, I, I read about these different things. You know, I go over different relationships. And then, you know, and some of the stuff I do read, I'm like, wow, this does apply to my relationship. Or this is what we went through. Or this is what we did. Mm -hmm. So I want to just give you guys this information. Maybe you guys were like, wow, it might click something. You, you never know. Yeah. All right. So after the spooning, right? Then you go into a couple different phases depending on where your relationship's at. Now it could be loose spooning, right? So you still got the arm over there, but you guys are a little bit farther apart, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not so tight together. You've got uh, the side by side, which is you guys either facing each other or towards, you know, you guys' back towards each other. And where you guys are at in this position tells a world about your relationship. Mm. Because if you guys are back to back and you guys are both spread to the very, very edges of the bed, then that could say that, hey, listen, something is uncomfortable in the relationship or you guys are not as tight as you used to be. What if the bed is really small? So if the bed is really small, so we'll get into that later, but you don't want to have a small bed either, <laughs> all right? It's actually, it will disturb the sleep patterns of your partner oh, because be you terrible. might be bumping them, you might be moving in the night, the mattress might not be one of those awesome ones that you can set your side and they set their side. We're not that updated, okay? I don't have we, that. We, we've got a regular mattress yeah. where if you move and you toss and turn, you're probably going to keep your partner up, okay? That's not nice. Uh, if you're snoring and stuff like that, that's a whole different subject. But if you're closer, you're obviously going to hear it or they might be snoring in your ear. I told John, okay? you just use a pillow, put it over their face. <laughs> It'll handle that snoring for you. So if I don't show up for next Sunday at Cupid's <laughs> Corner, you know what happened to me. He doesn't snore, he's fine. <laughs> So that's another one. Now, you also have the Hollywood style sleeping position. This is something that you usually see in movies, you see in mm -hmm. uh, in TV shows, and you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. And you might do this with your significant other. Uh, wait, me and John used to do this until he had a bad shoulder. It was called, it's called the Hollywood style. I didn't know that. That's where, you know, usually the male or the predominant person, alpha, whoever it is, because we're not talking about different genders here, mm -hmm. is laying back and has the arm and then... And then yeah. this one's like this. And then you just put your arm over and you're sleeping <laughs> like this, right? Now, you know, a couple of different things happen. Now, this might work for some relationships and some people. It doesn't happen for a lot of people because different people sleep different ways. So some people like to sleep on their sides. On some their people like right, to yeah. sleep on their stomachs, right? Some people do and can sleep on their backs. And the person that has the alpha who's having that has to sleep on their back if the woman's usually gonna sleep, uh, or the person is gonna sleep on their shoulder and the inside. 
Um, now, that person has to be comfortable, too, with the person's body that they're laying on because they won't get good sleep either. Mm -hmm. The whole point of you guys sleeping is to get good, restful sleep because it's good for your health, mm -hmm. okay? And it's good for the relationship, too, as well. So these are just some of the different positions that you guys might be sleeping in or it can tell a lot about your relationship. And, you know, if you don't believe me, go on Google, research <laughs> couples, sleeping positions, and you will see a lot of information. Way more information than I thought was going to be on there. Yeah, like, I mean, me like and John crazy. used to sleep like that, and now we sleep with our backs turned to each other. Yeah, but close. Yeah, yeah, no, we sleep close. Yeah, yeah I just like sleeping on my right, my right side. He'll sleep wherever. I toss and turn. He, he's got the dog on his side. We do this thing where, like, the dog sheds, oh, no. right? No, no, So no, the no. dog stays on his side of the bed, no. and that means he has to sleep a certain way, and then eventually he gets, not me. Yeah, he gets over it, and then he's got to get the dog off the bed so he can get comfortable. That's not true at all. So the reason that I sleep different is because I have two bad shoulders. I have slap tears. Superior labrum, anterior, and posterior tears. Ouch. So at that point, it's very, very uncomfortable for me to sleep, and I do like to sleep on my sides. Even if I was to sleep on my stomach, I get pain. If I sleep on my back, the shoulder like falls out of the, the, the little ball joint action, the labrum that's in there. So at that point, listen, it's uncomfortable in any way. Um, but I do like to sleep on my sides. I think that's the best thing. I get the most rest that way. So I think one of the most important things, though, is to sleep together and yeah. to try to coordinate the bedtime together. Absolutely. Because a lot of people, I know you guys work different shifts and you know, maybe somebody works a night shift, morning shift, whatever it might be. And then now all of a sudden, you know, your partner is sleeping totally different hours as you. And yeah. you know, you got the TV on in the middle of the night yeah. and the person doesn't want the TV on or you got your little lamp on now it's shining in their face. And you know, you have to be considerate. Even cell phones or tablets at this point. Cause it's bright. bright. And I mean, they, you can turn it down, but it's still bright. They illuminate blue light. Okay, yeah. which can and is proven to actually disturb your sleep patterns or maybe keep you up. Mm -hmm. And this could happen to your partner too if they're looking at that stuff. Now, some devices and stuff like that, you can turn that light off, which is pretty cool. You can wear glasses, but are you going to wear these glasses in bed before bed? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, I guess. I just got some really cute clear ones. I was going to put them on for you so you can see. I oh, think they're really, really cute. I like that. That yeah, sounds good. It's cute. <laughs> No. So, um, th this is just some of the different things that you guys can do. Now, obviously, if there's any problems in the bed, like people snoring and stuff like that, address it with your partner. There are different ways that you can get possibly over the snoring issue. If you don't tell me, just keep nudging them, it's just going to keep happening. Okay? And it's going to disturb both your sleep patterns still at that point because you're going to be waking up, then you're going to nudge them, it's going to wake them up. That's going to be a problem for both of you guys. Okay? Um, so, that's the first thing, all right? Health and sleeping together in the relationship, in the same bed. And make sure you're coordinating to have times together so you guys are sleeping together. It creates more of a bond for you guys too as well. You wouldn't think it, but you guys in that bed. Plus comfortability. Um, you know, some people can't fall asleep without their significant other near them or by them. I can't. Or want them by them nope. because they feel more comfortable about it. Yep. Um, you know, now if you do this, you know, you could become codependent on, on your partner I'm or spouse. So at that point, that might work for you guys. It might not work for you guys. It's it works for great. us, yeah. but it might not work for other people out there. And, you know, most of the information I've read about couples spending all their time together usually says negative things. But yeah. I am, and her are the living proof that, listen, it can work for some couples. Yeah. And every couple is usually different. Um, so at that point, you have to see what works for you guys and make sure that you're not annoying your partner. Uh, and make sure that they can live with that because if you want some long-lasting relationship, you know, that's what it's going to be. Um, so that's just one thing. So I was coming across another study, and we've talked about kissing and how the benefits of kissing in the relationship and how it increases health and, and increases dopamine and, and, and also oxytocin in the mm -hmm. brain and stuff like that, which is like happy hormones um, and bonding hormones. So I was reading a study today because we're obviously married, and we talk to married couples or couples that might possibly get married in the future. <laughs> and it was really crazy on one of the last studies that happened. So it said that one in five married couples only kiss once a week. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy. Once a week. That's crazy. You know, actually, just to bounce in there real quick, because this is very important, every single night before I go to bed, I give John a kiss. Yes. And I tell him good night. Yes. And I say I love you. Yes. Every single night, even when he's dozing off, I'm like, yep. hey, get up real quick. Yep. <laughs> he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this, she, but you just woke she, me up. She Thanks a lot. Stirs my sleeping patterns. <laughs> we were talking about not to do. But, but. But she gets uh, we, a kiss yep. before I go to bed. Every night. It's important. So that, that's kind of crazy. Um, the other thing is, is that. 
when these couples or married couples finally lock lips, it's usually for five seconds. Well, think about that. Mm-hmm. Five seconds. And at that point, more than 40% of those couples might not even kiss at all. So it's it's pretty crazy. I find that a little crazy. Yeah. Don't you think that's, that's unhealthy? when they find you locked lips, it will no longer last than five seconds for 40% of them, excuse me. So 40% of those couples that lock lips, it will only be for five seconds. So 60% of the couples could be kissing for longer, I guess. Okay, so funny thing that's is, better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this in there too because it was really funny and it's true. So do you remember what Peter said this weekend? Yeah, so Peter asked... Uh, we were at the pool, all right, and we are hanging out. Why don't we French kiss or something like that anymore <laughs> he goes, or something like that? Because he, he, you had, literally, there was this couple that was in the pool, and, you know, obviously they must be in the honeymoon period because they were, like, all over each other, need, a, need, need to get a room, not in the pool. And you, cause we're PDA. In the, we're, yeah, we're in the, like, the kids' pool. So why are you in the kids' pool? At least go to the adult pool and do your thing over there. Anyway, so my kid's over there staring at this you know, wonderful couple that, you know, making out in the pool. And he's like, hey, mom, he's like, you do you and dad, like, you guys don't French kiss? And it's like, I guess to some degree, you don't. You're not. And then I, I did. I came to you and I was like, isn't it funny he just said that? Because, well, you know, you're not really supposed to, I guess, you know, like, you shouldn't be French kissing all over the place. I think you're French kiss. I think that's really up to the couple where they're at and what the situation is, okay? And just, I mean. Like just, all over, though. So you do, just do a weird um, situation. And usually it's, a, it's the... It's the new honeymooning couples or couples that are first starting date and they're mm-hmm. getting to know each other and starting to do this. So I looked up why, right? And it said, this is where the main reasons why people don't fresh, French kiss anymore. And me and Sharice do French kiss, but we do it behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Now we do kiss a lot as far as, you know, smooches and stuff like that, and the lips, locking lips and stuff like that. But um, the reasons why. So one was, there's not enough time. Now that you guys are together <laughs> as a couple, there's work, there's family, there's all these different things. That was one funny two um you don't need to french kiss anymore to be to be aroused by your partner i guess that has something to do with it i I don't know why because i would think that french kissing even if you were used to your partner is going to help with arousal Mm -hmm. right with intimate contact Mm -hmm. you know because i mean listen you can kiss your grandma on the cheek you know know, whoever it is you know when you're passionately going with with the person then obviously you know it should probably cause or stimulate more arousal um so that was another one um, the other one was, you know, basically, you, you don't need to anymore. There's just no energy into you it. You should. Uh, at that point, you don't have any energy to do it. And, and just, you know, what you've moved on and you've grown in your relationship. That's what it said. You know, I don't agree with any of that. Mm-hmm. But that's what it's out there. So the main thing I want to take away from this is, is really you should be talking or getting information or, you know, advice from pretty successful couples mm-hmm. now, some of the information that I read on the internet about couples hits it right on the head or for us mm-hmm. and maybe I'm wrong because maybe there's couples out there that, that go along with this perfect. and maybe they are doing okay um, you know but most you know, there's some of the things that I read that I, I'm like man this is this is like this is mm-hmm. this is death for the relationship this is going down a one-way street and not coming back like you, you were set I mean I would probably ask John if there was a problem yeah I would yeah. I would be like, is there an issue or am I doing something wrong yeah. or yeah. Yeah. do you not love me anymore? Oh, God. <laughs> those questions, guys. Watch <laughs> out for those questions. <laughs> Females, do not give those questions out just like that. <laughs> the guy's going to be like, no, honey, you know, I love you. And, you know, they're going to say <laughs> these things. And most of the time they mean it and sometimes they might not. So mm-hmm. it just depends where your relationship is at. I mean, of course, <laughs> all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this is just one of the surveys and some of the information that I've seen online. So, if you're going online and you're looking for information to help you guys, first of all, you should be listening to us. Yeah, keep its corner. And if you haven't seen every one of our episodes, you need to go to YouTube and check it out. Yeah. And you can check out all the Cupid's Corners and get all this great information. And if you need to, press the repeat button and watch it again and again and again. Yeah. Maybe you're going to come across somebody out there that needs this information. Maybe you have a friend, you're like, you know, you're, you're not that good at giving advice or you haven't been in a successful relationship. Pass on the link, man. Tell them to go to Titan Medical Center YouTube and we'll give you all the information. Males and females will give you guys the tips and the tricks for success, okay? <laughs> for Cupid's Corner success. So, guys, this has been another great Cupid's Corner segment. We love bringing this information to you guys. You got anything else to add? Oh, thanks, John, for doing all the footwork on all this cool research. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, guys can do this, okay? So it and is what it is. And it's good to always recognize that as a woman. Credit, credit, give me credit where credit is due. Exactly. Both male and female, okay? Partners, 50-50. That's always. what it is, what it's all about. So guys, keep it locked to our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course our YouTube. And guys, join us every week for Cupid's Corner every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. Or you can catch it on social media if you don't live in the great state of Florida or you don't have time, you can always DVR it too as well. Make sure to check out the Facebook Titan page and that will have it on there too if you're looking for it. So guys, it's been a great Cupid's Corner. Thank you for joining in. And I'll see you next week. See you then.